Hey guys, how's everybody doing? I am doing great. I just thought I would pop on and say hi to you guys. I was gonna actually do a video today on how to make um, homemade yogurt, raw yogurt um, from fresh cow's milk, but I forgot that I had marinated some beef to make some jerky, so I needed to use my dehydrator for that. So I'll have to postpone my yogurt video and maybe do that tomorrow because um, I incubate my yogurt in my dehydrator. So yeah, we are excited to get our first little batch of beef jerky. We used some of um, some of the beef from, from our butcher with Luke and it smells delicious um, in the marinade so I can't wait to try it. But So since I didn't do my video today on yogurt, um, I thought I would just come out and give you guys an update of the garden and the greenhouse and kind of where we're at. Um, the garden this year is taking shape beautifully. It's um, a lot better than last year, that's for sure. You know, last year it was it was quite overwhelming and a little a little too much to handle um, the way that we did the garden. So we just had lots of long rows. Um, which turned into tons of uh, take these off. Which turned into tons of weeds, and um, it was really hard to keep keep control of. So this year we do have some rows, but we've done we've done plastic uh, black plastic on everything, and it's been amazing. I will never garden um, again, not in this area anyway, without covering my rows and everything with plastic because it just it eliminates the need to weed your garden and you know bake break your back um constantly weeding so i'm actually gonna let's see step out here i'll show you guys so this year we've done kind of a, a mixture of everything and we've got some rows and then we also have um some raised beds that we did and eventually i would like to have um our raised beds be a little bit deeper but this year we just used kind of some scrap wood that we had in the back um, and did some beds and really for me it was just a matter of I guess defining the areas of my garden more than we did last year so scaling it down a lot so that we didn't have as many of each vegetable and really making it more realistic for us and I'm excited that we did it like this because I can also do a second crop of most of these vegetables so we'll get to harvest these in the summer um, and then we can plant a another crop to have another harvest so I'm excited about that so let me show you guys what we got going on we have um, we've got a row of purple onions here and these are doing really well. Um, I have noticed over the last couple days that something, something is breaking my stems. And I don't know if it's birds or rabbits getting in here. I mean, we've got a fence around the garden, but, um, or frogs maybe, because these, the only bad thing about the plastic <clears throat> is the frogs love it. The toads love to live underneath it which isn't necessarily bad because the toads eat the bugs um, that eat our plants. So it's kind of a love-hate relationship because I think that they are, they are breaking some of my onions. However, we've, we've got a ton of onions here, so I'm not really worried about it. And they're still doing okay. As you can see, the bulbs are still doing fine. So, um, so over here, we've got some of our boxes. In this one, we have carrots. And as you can see, this this they are doing very well. So some of them didn't germinate. As you can tell, some of our holes are empty. And that's just how seeds go. Sometimes they don't always germinate. So that's why you want to plant more than one seed in each hole. And then once they begin to grow, like this is one carrot plant right here. But when we started, we planted two to three seeds in each hole. So we would clip um, the other two, pick the strongest plant, and then clip the other two to get rid of them. And it's called thinning them out, just in case you never heard that term before. But look at these beautiful carrots. So they, I think Joe and I counted, it's it's a hundred and something carrots in here that have, that have sprouted. So I'm excited. We eat a ton of carrots. I'm going to can some of them um, for dinners and stuff. Fresh carrots, maybe pickle some carrots. There's so many things you can do with carrots. 
Over here we had jalapenos and bell peppers. And as you can see, they didn't do too well as far as germinating. So this is a jalapeno plant. And then we've got a couple more over here. And then we've got a couple ball pepper plants. So what I did was I started some new seeds in the greenhouse. Um, and they're, they're doing really well. So once they're big and strong, we can transplant them out here. Or I might just leave them in the greenhouse. I don't know. This is my lettuce box. And I have this clear garden mesh over it um, to keep the bugs and worms out because last year the worms got to all of my cabbages and all my lettuces and we didn't get to harvest any of them. Just a little bit of the cabbage. But we've already harvested, um, actually we had a fresh salad for lunch today. Um, these are just mixed salad um, greens here. Got some purple ones back there. And then these are gonna be my iceberg lettuce heads. And then of course we have our spinach plants over here and they're doing really great. This netting, you guys, is amazing keeps all the bugs out it's awesome and then these back rows are going to be for our um, cabbage broccoli cauliflower and Brussels sprouts once we transplant them we've got the seeds uh, in the greenhouse we started them in the greenhouse so once they're good and strong we will transplant those out here and your cabbages and broccolis and plants like that they need a lot of space because they get pretty big And over here, we've got my favorite cucumbers. These ones up front are my pickling cucumbers, and then the ones on the other side are my regular cucumbers. But as you can tell, they're doing great. Look at them. Already starting to climb up the fence. Already flowering. We already have some. Look at these little cucumbers growing. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that so cute? Oh, I love cucumbers. And it's kind of funny, over here, we have this rogue squash plant <laughs> that is actually from last year. When we were done with the, the garden last year, we, um, we, we put the pigs in here so that they could till it up for us. And so we would throw our scraps out to the pigs. And so we must have threw out some squash to them at some point and the seeds planted and here we've got a squash plant and this plant does not require much i mean it literally i mean you can tell it's it's overtaken by grass and i haven't even done anything but water it and it's doing just fine it's a little wilted right now because it's super hot today so we'll make sure to give it a good drink of water once the sun goes down in addition to the squash we've got some <laughs> tomato plants that have sprouted themselves over here I was gonna pull them and Joe's like, no, leave them. So they're already starting to produce, these are cherry tomatoes. So, um, you know, these are Joe's ghetto little tomato plants that planted themselves. So I guess he's keeping them. And I can't remember if I showed you guys um, Joe's rain catching system that he built on the greenhouse. He's so amazing. I love that man. He's so creative, so innovative, and super handy. It's like genie in a bottle, you know? He just does anything that I ask. And the greenhouse has been something I've wanted for a really long time. It's just, it's so cool. And he went above and beyond to make this just the coolest space ever. Um, so he added, let me show you. He added gutters on both sides of the greenhouse and then um, we've got barrels back here and the rain just falls right into the barrels and we've got a spigot and we have one of these on both sides of the greenhouse so we can have a hose hooked up for watering the garden and so far this year we have not used any of our well water we've watered the garden with nothing but rain water got all the vents open on the greenhouse it's really hot it's, I think it's in the 90s today 
Um, we just ordered some greenhouse shade material to put on the top because the temperature is a little bit higher in there than what we want it to be. So we've got to get it cooled down. We've got our corn over here. Look how beautiful they are. They're doing great. Now the walkways, um, there's lots of stuff you can do with the walkways. You can mulch them, um, put straw down, but really what we found is we've just been mowing them. <laughs> we just, the walkways are wide enough here that we can just bring in the push mower and we can just mow in between the rows. And so that's what I've been doing. And to be honest, I kind of like it because I don't like walking around in the dirt and the sand because um, I like to garden barefoot a lot. So the grass is, is soft on my toes. I kind of like it. So this side of the garden is not quite complete. We're still working on it. Um, the box up front are my beans. I've got pinto beans, black beans, great northern beans, and um, kidney beans. I also have green beans and then some snap peas up there. And then of course this is my herb box. I moved the herbs out of the greenhouse because it was a little too hot for them in there. So I'm transplanting them all into this middle box here. Not quite done. And then this one, we've got to get this all cleaned up. We're going to till this up. And this box is going to be for my garlic. So I've got to get my garlic bulbs in the ground. I'm actually behind on that, but good Lord. <laughs> it's like one project after another. Um, we have our compost pile over there in the corner. We have another rogue squash plant growing by itself over there. And then Joe's got his potatoes going in these buckets. Oh, you guys look, I can't even tell you this, this watering system has been amazing. Um, last year, of course, we didn't have anything like that. We had to run the garden hose over here. And when you're gardening, you need to be able to wash your hands. Hello. <laughs> and spray your feet off. And, um, so yeah, having like running water in here has just been amazing. And, and to have it be rainwater, we're not having to pay for, you know, electricity for the well pump and stuff to run water out here. It's been super awesome. I just feel kind of, um, you know, cool. We've got a rain catching system over here. But yeah, these are his potatoes. Um, they, it's quite interesting. This has been like his, his baby. Uh, we got, yeah, we got seed potatoes and planted them. And when they start to come out of the dirt, you want to cover them with a new layer of, I'm sorry. Yeah. When they come out of the dirt, you want to cover them with a new layer of dirt. And it's pretty much been every couple of days we come out and they're pushed through already. So these have grown so big, and before you know it, they're gonna be huge coming out of these buckets. And what's cool about doing the bucket potatoes is when they're ready to harvest, you just dump the bucket over. You don't have to dig them out, you just dump the bucket and harvest your potatoes. So that's gonna be really fun. Got some of our green beans. We just transplanted these about a week ago. We started these in the greenhouse. Got some snap peas going. Look at that, cute little thing. So we've got some uh, string here that we put in, just simple supports for them when they start growing up the sides. The corns are beautiful. This year we'll actually get to eat some because last year Luke ate all of our corn. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> so we actually had to put um, the wood on top of the fencing because last year Luke pushed the fencing down and ate all the corn. <clears throat> Over here we have white onions. So the other side was purple onions. These are white onions. Look at how good they're doing. They're so big and strong. It's so funny when we water them, all the toads poke their little heads out. They make me giggle. I like toads. They're my friends. And then these are our grape, our grape vines from last year. We thought that they died in the winter. We don't know the first thing about having grapes. Um, 
and you know I was just at Lowe's one day and I'm like oh let's do grapes and so we got the grapes and they I thought they died and um, to my surprise this spring they came back all on their own and they're huge and they're producing grapes so we did um, we mulched this area cleaned them up really good we've been watering them every day and then Joe put a simple trellis in here for them and they've just taken off so I'm really stoked about having some fresh grapes kind of by accident too because I don't even know what I'm doing with grapes but look at that aren't those pretty I'm so excited they're just the coolest thing too look how they hang on and they climb across like that it's just so neat oh hey little guy <laughs> you guys we have so many insects in the garden I love coming out here butterflies and dragonflies the honeybees look at these these ones are actually getting pretty big how cool is that maybe I'll make some homemade wine my mead turned out amazing. I, I need to do a video on, on homemade mead because that was like the easiest stuff to make. Um, I just bottled it probably about three weeks ago and I'm gonna let it age for a while, of course, before I try it. But I did, um, I did blueberry orange and strawberry mango and I ended up, I think, with 16 bottles total. And um, it's definitely alcoholy, that's for sure. But that's okay, because sometimes you get thirsty. Anyway, um, <clears throat> don't judge. I brought my dills out here because, like I said, I'm moving all the herbs outside. It was getting a little too hot in the greenhouse, but the dill are, are doing great. In fact, I need to come out and harvest some of this and start drying it because I need to uh, plan on doing a ton of pickles this year. So in the greenhouse, got all the fans going the best we can got a fan here bringing in some of the air from outside just for circulation um, and I think that greenhouse shade is gonna really help out because it's pretty warm in here it's hotter than hotter than what we want it to be um, you typically want you know 70 80 degrees ish and we are uh, where are we at just above 90 so it's a little warm in here you don't typically want it this hot in a greenhouse but these are all my Brussels sprouts that sprouted. Just waiting for them to get a little bit bigger. And then what we'll do, like I was saying with the carrots, we're going to thin these out. So we've got, you know, obviously we put two to three seeds in each one. And we'll wait for them to get bigger. And once we see the one that's the strongest, we'll just snip the other two with a pair of scissors and thin them out. And then the one that's left is the one that we'll transplant. And over here, we've got some broccoli cabbage and cauliflower got all my cauliflowers going I did leave the rosemary in here um, <clears throat> I don't know if you guys know but rosemary they are like hardy plants and to be honest the smell of the rosemary is amazing and it just fills the greenhouse with this amazing aroma and I, I really like rosemary. I think it's probably my favorite herb, so I kept these in here. We've got some strawberry plants going. Um, this one's in a bucket. It seems to be doing very well. We had a little bit of an ant problem. Um, so what we did, if you guys can see, we just took a mason jar, poked some holes in it so the ants can get in, and we filled it with um, cream of wheat and you kind of set these out. Now these are not traps. The purpose of this is for the ants to crawl inside. They get the cream of wheat and they take it back to their colony and when they eat it, it explodes in their stomach and it kills them. <laughs> Sounds terrible, but um, if not, they're gonna eat all my strawberries. So they are happily doing that. I came out and there was a whole trail of ants carrying little pieces of uh, cream of wheat. So. I don't see any ants in here. I haven't lately, so I think it's working. We have those little mason jar hotels all over the greenhouse and even in the garden beds. So The strawberries are doing great though. Look at this. They're all starting to flower and produce. We eat a ton of strawberries, so I'm really excited about that. 
Um, and then, I don't know if you guys know, but strawberries um, began to shoot off their own runners. And let me show you one that's not bagged so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, look, here's one. So this is a strawberry runner. They shoot these off, and what you get at the bottom here is a root system. So if you don't do anything with it, what they will do is they will shoot them off and they will plant themselves somewhere new and create a whole new strawberry plant. I don't know about you guys, but I'm just fascinated by this stuff. I had no idea. Thank God for YouTube. So what I've done is you want to take those runners and I just put them in a bag of soil and loosely tighten them, uh, close this up and the leaves on the runner will start to get bigger. Once this gets a little bit bigger with several leaves of its own, you just come in and snip the runner from the mother plant and go and plant this in its own pot or in a new area and you have a brand new strawberry plant. Look at these roots that have already started growing in here. You don't need to water it because they get all of their nutrients from the mother plant. So the purpose of this is just separating it so that you can snip it and replant it in a different location. So we have several of those going all over. Look at these. Got another one here. Another one there. Oh, look, there's an ant. Get out of there, sucker. We also have some over here. See, there's another one. I just keep an eye on them. You want to wait until the leaves get big enough to where, you know, they're, they're going to stick out of the bag like that. But all of these are going to be their own little strawberry plant because we eat so many strawberries. I definitely plan on keeping them. Then we have all of our tomatoes. Our tomatoes are doing amazing this year. Um, if you guys... Forgive me, I'm starting to um, glisten a little bit. <laughs> That's what my mom used to say. When we, girls glisten, so it's hot up in here. Hot up in her. Um, Roots and Refuge YouTube channel. You guys should look her up. She's awesome. Um, I started following her, and she's really knowledgeable with uh, tomatoes. And I started incorporating what she does with her tomato garden with ours. And this year, our tomatoes are just taking off. It's really an idea of heavily, um, let me step out real quick, I'm hot. Heavily, heavily pruning the tomatoes. Last year our tomato bushes were so big, you, you couldn't even get into um, the bush to really harvest the tomatoes. And they got diseases, they had uh, blossom end rot, and it just was not good. So this idea of heavily pruning them allows airflow, helps to prevent disease, um, just makes them more manageable, especially because we have ours in the greenhouse. And I put mine in the greenhouse this year because we had major, major tomato worms last year. And I mean, these worms are as big as your finger and they will devour the entire plant if you don't do something about it. So we put them in the greenhouse this year and they're doing great. We're working on mulching uh, the bottom. We did have just straw down on the bottom, which was fine, but as you can see, the weeds are already coming up. So because we're, I guess you could say, I was gonna say lazy gardeners, but I really think it's smart gardening. Um, we put down plastic and then we're mulching so that we don't have to worry about weeding them. So we're gonna finish these beds up with that. But you kind of end up with like this tomato tree almost. You know, you prune all the way up. You want to have one center branch, one center steam, uh, stem, and you don't want to allow too many runoffs. But look at how beautiful they are. And they're all producing fruit. Beautiful, perfectly round, perfectly healthy fruit. I think every plant has um, tomatoes on it now. So... And this side we have um, cherry tomatoes. So they won't get much taller than this. These three here are cherry tomatoes. And these of course are regular, but look at these things. Aren't they beautiful? I can't wait. Oh, fresh tomatoes are so good. But see, we need to do the um, plastic and mulching because look at the weeds already. 
got my peppermint plants down here and I think what I'm gonna do with my strawberry runners once they're big enough I think I'm gonna pot them and I'm gonna use this shelf and put my strawberry plants up on the shelf but we actually went out to the, the forest and took some tree pine tree logs stems whatever you want to call branches and we're using those as our supports we did have these PVC pipes but as you can see the tomatoes have outgrown them so this is much better and you know you can top them off to stop them from growing any taller uh, or you can just let them grow I really don't have a problem with them growing all the way to the ceiling just managing them and then eventually topping them off but I think that they're they're doing so great they're just beautiful Got my lavender, sage, marigolds. I love marigolds, you guys. They are so easy to take care of and they're um, pest repellents for your garden. Some more dill. The lavender smells so good. It's one of my favorite flowers. So yeah, that's just a little, um, little bit of a, a garden tour for what we've got going on this year I'm really excited I think it's the calm before the storm like I've been saying because you know a lot of the stuff is going to be ready to harvest at the same time so um, dehydrating canning pickling drying and preserving all this stuff um, it's going to keep me busy over the summer but I'm really excited about it this this year's garden is doing really great and we did stagger um, a lot of the plants this year so I did only five cabbage plants five Brussels sprouts five broccolis because last year I think we did like 20 25 plants of each at the same time we didn't realize as brand new gardeners that those are gonna be ready to harvest like at the same time we can't eat all that you know um, and there's only so much you can realistically preserve um, as far as like storage and stuff, you know, I don't have a cellar and things like that. So I've got to be smart with this. So I've done, you know, staggering the vegetables and then I'm going to do a second crop of each so that we can have another harvest in the fall. So yeah, but it is, it is a, it's been a lot of fun and we've got a lot more work to do still on the greenhouse. Like I said, it's, it's a little hot. Um, so we're definitely going to get some greenhouse shading up there and help those plants out a little bit, but it's doing great so I just wanted to come on and say hi I um, haven't posted a video since uh, we took Luke to the butcher we got all of his meat back um, I think it was last week and it filled an entire deep freezer and I mean the bigger deep freezer we have two we have a small one and a big one and Luke's meat filled the entire big deep freezer I don't even know how many packages of hamburger meat steaks um, roasts they gave me all of the beef bones back so I can make beef stock um, which I'm really excited about having homemade beef stock and it's just great you guys we've got a freezer full of fresh chicken a freezer full of fresh beef the garden is gonna do great this summer and I hope I can preserve a lot of it um, and then we're getting ready to butcher a pig here pretty soon too she's she's getting big and it's about time for her to go and we'll be all set so we've got a couple months for sweet Gracie she's um she's getting nice and big but i'm getting ready to wean sarah from her probably in the next couple weeks um i was technically supposed to wean sarah i think june 1st you know they say around eight months but i'm not gonna lie i'm being lazy it's it's been really nice having um sarah's help with milking gracie so i'm probably gonna go first or second weekend of june and then i'll wean sarah off of her you know because Gracie she's pregnant so being pregnant and nursing um, in the heat of the summer I'm not a cow expert I just know for me I'd be hating life if I was pregnant and nursing in the heat of summer so I think Gracie needs a break um, so I'm gonna give Sarah another week or two and then I'm gonna go ahead and wean her um, but I was just gonna show you guys Grace she's getting big she's due in October um, and her calf, we're anxious for this calf to arrive because as you guys know, this is Luke's, Luke's baby. Here's Gracie over there. What are you doing, Grace? That good? There's Titus. 
She's getting big. Hey, big guy. Hi. What are you doing, T? Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. Oh, he just snotted all over me. Take you guys in real quick. This is our piggy that's about ready for butcher. Hey, mama. She's getting big. Look at her. Hey, what are you doing, big girl? We're out of pork chops, so it's about that time. Gracie, hi. Hi, beautiful. You want to say hi? Hi. Hi, Grace. Oh. Oh, don't look at my phone. <laughs> And there's Sarah. Oh yeah, we see you. We see you, movie star. Big mama. Are you my big mama? Yeah? Oh, look at that belly. Look at that belly. She's getting big already, you guys. Look at Sarah. Sarah's almost bigger than Grace. She's massive. Aren't you Sarah? Sarah hates the flies. I mean, I think all cows hate flies, but Sarah hates, hates the flies. <laughs> Show off. That good, Grace? Yeah. That's my girl. That's my girl. Charlotte over here, laying in her mud hole. I need to fill it up. It's important for them to have mud holes when it's this hot. You hot? I'll get you some water, okay? So, anyway, all right guys. Well, I'm gonna head out into the garden. I'm gonna finish transplanting, transplanting those herbs. Um, but I just wanted to give you guys a little tour and a little update and say hi, and I hope you guys are all having a beautiful, beautiful summer so far. All right, I'll talk to you soon.